Sheila, you know the other day, a four-year-old in my class came up to me and said, Ms. Geetika, I'm so stressed. <laughs> you know, that was my reaction, but his straight face, I had to really be quiet. And then I was doing some research and there was a study in the US which says 90% of doctor visits are for stress-related ailments. Can you believe that? Of course I can. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about. Diseases, how they come into being and how stress plays a role. But first, intro please. Hi there. You're listening to Spirituality Sideshow, where the weird meets the wonderful. Hit it. So Sheila, 90% is a crazy number for a population like US also. I'm sure it will be much higher in India and so on. Number wise, but what is really, what do you think is really causing so much stress to people? Yeah, suddenly what has changed? Our parents didn't seem that stressed. No, but uh, see, it is wrong to keep comparing different ages yes, with yes. the stress levels. The kind of things that we have today, they didn't have at that point of time. Very true. I don't think it is real to compare that age with this age as far as stress levels go. You know what has been happening also is that the stress levels in our body has increased so much. We are mm -hmm. all walking around with such high levels of cortisol that most of the times we are not even aware that we are stressed. How many people I have who have gone to doctor and come back to me and say, you know what, my doctor says my high BP is because of stress. And they say, but you know, what stress do I have? It is, have they gotten used to that state of mind? It is. You have got so used to walking around with high levels of stress that you don't even recognize no. what stress is. So basically cortisol is produced when you're in that flight or flight, fight or flight mode. Yes. So your body is constantly trying to, yeah. uh, you know, be in the, prevent you from yes. any war <laughs> for that matter. You know, there's a study which says that when the rat notices that a kite in the sky has noticed him, he goes completely still. I mean, I'm assuming the rat is a male, okay? <laughs> so he goes completely still. This is the fight, flight or freeze mode, which is an action right now. So the entire body is producing stre stress hormones, cortisol, adrenaline, to keep him safe mm. and protected, okay? But the moment the kite vanishes from the sky, the rat moves and goes back to normal. But that is not the case with us humans. We have a stressor which keeps coming up. We go into fight, flight, freeze mode. And then we forget to unfreeze. And the chemicals are continuously being produced in our system. And Correct. And to counter those chemicals that are being produced like cortisol, like you mentioned, the body starts generating higher level of sugars, yes. higher level of blood pressure, which on a prolonged way becomes a permanent state yes. of your health. And that's where we hear this term, lifestyle diseases. Ah, the fancy invoked term, I have a lifestyle disease here. Yes. Feels so fancy. <laughs> but so, but so, okay. So coming back to the point that our parents didn't have it, I understand we should not compare, but do you also think that it is also because they had lesser distractions and more ways to keep their mind idle and be able to deal with stress in their life than we have now because now we have social media and we're spending hours on it and not even thinking about how we are where we are right now mm -hmm. and we are focusing there so we don't have those places where we can just take a walk in nature we do it much lesser now and things that calm us down maybe just meditate or go for your uh, prayer sessions and so on like our parents used to do so all the things that used to help them reduce stress probably has reduced for us mm -hmm. and all the things that are increasing stress have increased for us like you said competition, constant self badgering, criticism, guilt, fear and probably that balance is somewhere distorted. You know the other day there was a client who had come to me and we were doing a time audit. Now time audit is something that I do in my coaching to help them figure out where they are losing their time and what they are not prioritizing. Now when we did a time audit of 24 hours of her life, we realized that there was 8 hours for which she had no account of. Oh my! 8 hours. And those 8 hours, I can bet you anything, is going into scrolling, forwarding WhatsApp messages, looking at other people's reels and looking at other people's lives while doing nothing with us. 
Now, having said that, this is something that we all do. But what happens is that when we are looking at other people's lives, there is this constant loop which is going on in our head, which is constantly comparing, criticizing, judging, and not always in our favor. And sure. that keeps us stuck in that loop where we are. Now, I don't want to blame social media for everything, but definitely there is a rise in stress in our bodies and definitely there is no recognition of the fact that we are walking around with high stress levels. It's really like being walking, talking bombs that can explode at any point of time. Why do you think there are so many younger people dying of heart attack? Yes. Even though they are sick? So Sheila, you are saying that uh, instead of finding ways to reduce our stress like walking in nature while those things are going down in our lives, the things of comparison, self-criticism, fear of not being as good as the other YouTuber mm -hmm. is increasing constantly and probably that is what causing the stress. So, do you remember Geetika that we had breakfast before we started? Yes, yes, yes. While we were discussing the... Do you remember what we ate? Yes, I mean, it is. But do you remember the sensation of the idli going into your stomach? I don't even remember how many I ate. And do you remember? Exactly. Thank you for saying that because that's exactly what happens. We do so many things. We, we are multitaskers. We are watching Netflix while we eat. We are cooking lunches while we listen to podcasts. The thing is there is no full attention in anything in our life. Correct. And that increases the stress. That doesn't decrease the stress. You were talking about places that where we can be in silence. One of the places where we have to be in silence is in our own self. Yes. When was the last time we sat down and had a quiet meal? Don't Even when we go to restaurants, we have our iPhones out, right? And we, we are sending each other memes and WhatsApp messages right across the table. Uh, remember the lunch that we had with our friend where we took so many photos of the food that the food went yeah. out. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. So in the middle of all of this, while we are not connecting with ourselves, so busy with our food, don't know what we are eating, our poor body, our, this lovely body that we have is trying to balance all the chemicals, trying to push in some sugar increase the pressure of the blood to try and help you cope with everything that you're feeling you're feeling so many feelings in a minute right you're multitasking like spider-man <laughs> and you're not able to realize what your body really is going through and that's where the stress induced illnesses come in place yeah you know um, when i first learned about louise hay and i went through the session one of the things that louise hay says in her book you can heal your life is she talks about this term disease she says there's no such thing as disease and you know a lot of scientists a lot of doctors have corroborated the fact that there is no such thing as disease disease is just your body not at ease with itself how beautiful and why does that happen it happens because we have no clue what's happening in our heads we have no clue what's happening in our body now I know, Geetika, you've heard me say this multiple times, but your thoughts are the language of your mind and emotions are the language of your body. And every time you're walking around, running around, too busy to feel any emotion, too busy to sit with your anger, too busy to sit with your grief or your happiness, what is happening is you're pushing it into your body and not acknowledging it. An unacknowledged emotion grows grows, grows and creates this ease in your body. How crazy. Yes. In fact, uh, you, this book used to be one of my go-to books every time I had a headache, every time I had a knee pain because it gives you the reason for each and every disease. So let's introduce. So the few in the research that I was reading, the few illnesses that they were saying that uh, originated from stress were headache, high blood pressure, high sugar, diabetes, diabetes. So arthritis, autoimmune. So yes. let's see what the book tells us. It's a very interesting book because it gives you the emotion that is stagnant in your body and uh, that your body is trying to talk to you through this disease and an affirmation that you can say. So which would you like to go up? Let's look at high BP. High BP, perfect, page opened. Okay, so blood pressure high is 
long standing emotional problem not solved mm. so could it be something that we are not acknowledging it could be a conflict that you're going through in life since long and that you've not acknowledged and you don't want to do it uh, look at people who have high bp for instance mm-hmm. they might be people who are in bad relationships who have huge relationship conflicts there are people in high pressure jobs right where there is where there is a basis of conflict which you've not really looked at mm-hmm. and they have a lot of high blood pressure because these are emotions which you're not acknowledging correct blood pressure also means that there is no joy flowing through your life no oh. we are so busy working we are so busy building our houses and buying our bmws that we forgotten that the reason why we are building these houses or buying those bmws is to experience happiness you know you remember i had uh, this blood pressure episode a couple of weeks yes. back when my blood pressure went high at the age of 36 and i was panicking yeah and uh, you know for a moment i felt that i was so dead not looking at the things that gave me joy that my body was so feeling so dead just scrolling sitting on the couch mm-hmm. that my body was just in, trying to increase some pressure inducing some kind of movement in the body for you me know? to react to it that's how i felt and you remember when you came to my house and i was dancing on that beyonce song just to get going yeah yeah that was my remedy to it but uh, yeah you're right i mean there is no joy that you feel you become depressed and then you get diagnosed with something then you become more depressed and it's like such a vicious cycle you're not able to come out of it and then medicine somehow even push you more further away down the line i with all respect to doctors i want to say this medicines will only take care of your external symptoms true they do not find the root cause of your disease and the root cause is in the emotions that you have suppressed repressed not expressed hidden away true and not even or not even aware of them right so the first place to look for it is within you you know we don't have we any chosen the, we chose a topic that is so dear to <laughs> sheila i think she's this episode is going to be like one hour long <laughs> <laughs> no i mean uh, every time you go you hear people say look within look within you really don't know what look what within means uh, I mean, you really don't have any GPS which says go down, right <laughs> down. That which you do know. actually, don't you? Do. Yeah, actually, you're right. We do have a GPS. Our emotions are the best guidance system that we have in our life. Geetika, why don't you read what Louise Hay talks about heart attack? Oh And yes, let me, let me find that. The beauty of this book is that it is in order. So let's see, heart attack. squeezing all the joy out of the heart in favor of money or position right but does that mean that we should not run after money or position or not aim for it no is it saying that it's no. saying that don't give up your joy mm. whatever you do has to be joyful right you know there is an old quote which says that you know there is a quote which says that there are two ways to be happy one is to do what you love mm-hmm. and in case you can't find something that you really love then love what you do now what is happening so here is yeah we are running after our homes and our cars and our educations and our foreign trips it's not wrong it's not wrong yeah it's not wrong at all i would i love to do it myself but the thing is that we have to be happy doing it true true heart attack is just squeezing the joy we have no more joy left same like the same thing that you said about your blood pressure yes yes and the affirmation for this is so beautiful i bring joy back to the center of my heart i express love to all so beautiful so nice and the another one that i wanted to read was diabetes because that's also becoming very prevalent in younger people it says longing for what might have been a need a great need to control deep sorrow no sweetness left yes it does that mean that you're not finding any joy in who you are as a person what you are and want to be inspired to be you know so many spiritual gurus have spoken about the power of now and yet we have not got it because most of the time we are not focusing on what we have we are focusing on what we should have and that i think is a primary cause of things like heart diseases things like diabetes that we keep having and now coming back to the other big disease which seems to be the on the prescription list of every doctor autoimmune diseases it's not even in the book and this book was published in the 80s 
Autoimmune is just the cells of the body attacking itself, thinking that it is a foreign, foreign particle. Mm -hmm. Now, what does that mean? It means that we have no self-love, we have no self-acceptance. How disconnected would you be with yourself yes. to be able to generate it? If yeah. Like that? And how disconnected you are with yourself that you perceive yourself as the enemy subconsciously. Wow. So stressful. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, this is a good time, I think, to uh, bring up that story that I was telling you about this Deepak Chopra's video that has been doing the rounds where he says that in the Ohio State University many years back, they did this study on rabbits where they give all the gave all the rabbits high cholesterol diet. Hmm. Now after a couple of days, they monitored their cholesterol and it was of course high except for a group of some rabbits. Mm. So that was very interesting. Everybody got so intrigued. What happened? What happened? What happened? And then after doing some research and observation, they realized that the person who was feeding that high cholesterol food to these rabbits didn't just leave the food in their uh, box and just run away. He used to sit with them, pet them, talk to them, feed it with their hands. So when the rabbits probably felt that kind of joy and love towards them, their body produced chemicals that help digest the high cholesterol diet so much better wow. and did not lead their cholesterol to go high despite the food that they were eating. So imagine your body is such a beautiful tool. Eventually all we all realize this day in day out that your body tries to work for you. But somewhere we are so hellbent to push its limits, push its limit, and then lead, which leads to a heart attack, which leads to a, a diabetes, a high blood pressure stage. You know, and the sad part is that we only look at our bodies when there is a, some diagnosis which has come in and when we are really scared for our lives. True. Should we be living when we are just staring at death in its face? Or should we not start living the rest of our lives too? That's my question. So very Seriously, I feel, I feel very strongly that, you know, when you live with gratitude and when you live doing the things that you love to do, at least for some part of the day. And by that, I don't mean scrolling through uh, Insta reels. No, coming to think of it, all the research, my personal experience, it makes you more tired. After one hour, I, I end up scrolling for two hours straight sometimes and I'm so much more tired when I've not done one thing physically at that moment. I'm just sitting on my couch mm -hmm. with my phone. So I feel uh, we people should remove going through YouTube reels and posts and social media or videos for that matter in the, from their relaxation time. So Gitika, I'm going to ask you this question. When you, you are self-aware you realize that scrolling through Insta is not really doing you any good. What still keeps you doing I that? I knew where this was going to. <laughs> I think somewhere I also see that, uh, I try to see joy from that because the other things that we need to do otherwise is to go out, meet people, go for walks, this, that. Probably sometimes it's not possible. Sometimes you just don't feel like it because otherwise you're so tired from the day. Is it otherwise. also fear that if you have so much of time, when you're not scrolling through social media, when you have so much of time, you will actually have to look at your life. You will have to look at yourself. Of course. And see where you're self-sabotaging yourself. No, and these are very tough questions to ask, Sheila. And where are your dreams? Do you have to pull them out from those cupboards where you've hidden them? True, true. The big questions. But yes, I mean, I think one must revisit these questions once a month at least to be able to not disassociate with your own self so much and may take small actions to do that. So Sheila, would you like to give us some tips to bust the stress? Bust the stress. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the, the first thing that you can do to bust that stress is learn to breathe. Learn to breathe. <laughs> breathe. We have such <coughs> a beautiful tool. We have such a beautiful tool. You don't have to buy it. You don't have to dress fancy. You don't have to wear any shoes. You don't have to do anything. You have it with you. You can do it anywhere. You can do it in your bed. 
you can do it in your bathroom you can do it when you're sitting <laughs> on the pot you can do it when you're waiting for the <laughs> elevator you can do it on the escalator you can do it when you're shopping you can do it while you're scrolling you can do it while you're cooking no you need to take yeah. a deep breath yes <sighs> yes but your breath you have it with you 15 minutes of deep breathing in the morning makes a difference to your life and every hour just for 5 minutes placing that hand on your heart stilling your heart and just breathing in deeply you will see that it creates wonders there is a beautiful book called breath by james nestor i think everyone needs to read it next time we will discuss this sure in our next podcast we are going to discuss breath by james nestor awesome and i have to tell if somebody says that i can't do every 5 minutes per hour i am just too busy attending calls meetings this that in one of our uh, tribe members uh, shila uh, mr shriram he wrote his book in his book launch was there and his company's uh, i think vp had come there and he i noticed him sitting there without touching his phone for one hour Wow. He's the VP of the company, and I went and asked him that uh, you know you're not seeming to touch your phone. He's like, I only check my phone. I check my phone only once in an hour. Wow. And if anybody needs to really reach out to me in an emergency, they know my secretary's number. Yes. So that is so beautiful. People are genuinely using it, and you cannot be more busy than a VP. So can, but yeah, you can, can, but don't pretend to. <laughs> <laughs> so that is one of the biggest tips that sheila had and i feel one of the other tips people might not like it not doing it but i feel it is work so beautiful for me is dance dance in your bathroom dance in your while you're cooking dance anywhere you like you know just put on some random music and do the cheapest steps you can i joined this dance fitness thing oh my god it is such a stress buster because you're doing all your bollywood moves and dances i just love it so try it why not if you if you can't dance and you don't know how to you can always go for a walk come on we yeah. are put that much stress yes. on you <laughs> <laughs> true true so few good tips for you a good book to read called breathe and you can always refer to the bible louise says you can heal your life it's a very beautiful book for everybody so this was quite a stress free session i must say we didn't prepare much for it and we enjoyed talking about it because this is sheila's passion topic yeah. because she worked so closely with people on this topic helping diagnosing their uh, ailments and trying to find the emotion that is leading in helping them work it out she's brilliant reach out to her and one more very awesome thing that we have to share today shila yay shila's new book comes out it is a beautiful stress buster where she has these witty witty comments and sheila's book of big book of cliches as all the cliches she feels people go by and how to bust them so one of them i want to read is stop asking people for directions to places they have never been to asking if you want to be an entrepreneur and one more i want to read is self care is giving the world the best of you instead of what's left of you that is super deep and that is so connected to our topic today i'm really excited sheila would you like to read the rest of the part of this topic okay and read it okay ah. okay let me put on my intellectual look self care is giving the world the best of you instead of what's left of you this is a hard hitting quote by kg reed clues that you're not taking self care seriously is when you're exhausted all the time feeling burnt out taken for granted resentful and angry mostly at yourself we pride ourselves in being able to give to everyone that's fantastic except let it not be at the cost of your own self taking care of yourself mentally physically emotionally and spiritually is absolutely necessary for your health and well being awesome and on um, that note yes on that note we say goodbye to you and can't wait to meet you again in our next episode and don't forget to buy the sheila's big book of cliches on amazon we'll put the link in the bio thank you bye bye Thank you.